Argentina depth chart for the 2023 Rugby World Cup, folks. We are going to look at Michael Checker's 33-man squad. Looking at the depth by position, how much depth has been built up in this Rugby World Cup cycle. And then also look at kind of some of the more notable omissions who have not made the squad. And then what has been the kind of top picked 15 of the players who are on the plane to France. We have already looked at some of the teams the likes of South Africa and New Zealand were looking pretty stable. England and Australia were looking pretty messy. I'll put the links up there for those videos if you want to compare. Keeping in mind that England and Australia both had coaching changes. So potentially that adds to the reason why maybe there is a little bit of chopping and changing between players. Now Argentina also did have that coaching change with Ledesma stepping down and Checker taking over the role. However, I would say, kind of at a glance, the Argentinian lineup is a lot more stable. They only used, I think, 63 players. Um, one of them maybe even an unused substitute who didn't get on, but 63 players in the cycle, whereas Australia was more than 70 and England more than 80. But yeah, we'll have a look at Argentina's numbers and you guys can let me know how you think they are looking for depth. If we look at the kind of squad itself, there are a few positions which look to have pretty nice depth in terms of a number one, number two, a number three player. Fullback looks pretty nice. That's a good spread between green, blue, and yellow. Uh, the midfield at 13, I think, looks pretty nice. Um, there's a few positions where it looks quite reliant on one player. That's Montoja there at hooker. He has a huge amount of time. Uh, Lavanini in the second row, number five, also has a huge amount of time. But yeah, overall, I don't think it looks too messy. The wings, that's a lot of players that they've used on the wings. And uh, they've used quite a few props as well. Um, but yeah, what we're really interested in is how does it look once we take out all the guys who didn't make the plane to France. If we start with the front row, again, if we start with Montoja, the guy has played more than 80% of the minutes at hooker in this Rugby World Cup cycle. It's very common for him to go 70 plus minutes. That's fine. Crevy is there in blue and Ignacio Ruiz is there in yellow. Uh, some of the guys who've not made it like Facundo Bosch. But ultimately, Montoja is going to play the majority of the game time. So a lot of Argentina's hopes rest on that man's shoulders. Loose head prop. It's a little bit more even between Gajo there in green and Tetis Chapado there in blue for number one. Sklavi has also had a little brief appearance in the number one uh, slot, but for the most part, it's Tetis Chapado and Gajo. Gajo only really emerged onto the scene, I think, in 2021, towards the tail end of the season. But since he has come into the squad, he's really taken over that leading spot. Um, and number three... Cordella is your main guy there in green, and there's a bit of game time spread between Bejo and Sklavi there as well. The main guys who have missed out in terms of your props are the likes of Santiago Medrano, uh, Muzio, Kejena. There's a few guys who have missed out, but I feel like the leading candidates in all three positions have made it. But clearly, uh, as I said, Montoya is of vital importance to Argentina's cause. I mean, Crevy is a capable and experienced replacement. But ideally, you want Montoya starting your games. And as captain, he should play most of them. Lox is a little bit more of an even spread and is three main guys that you rely on. If you're looking at number four, that's Guido Petty. He's been injured for a long time, so his numbers are only like 40-odd percent. He would probably be a bit higher if he had been fitter uh, in 2023, particularly. Uh, but behind him in blue is Alemano. And interestingly, if you're looking at number five as well, the blue guy is also Alemano. So Alemano is not the number one guy for minutes in either of those positions, but between both sides, he's had a lot of game time. Uh, obviously, Lavanini is there with 60 plus percent of the game time there. Uh, number five, the big tight headlock. He's a man mountain. And when his discipline is good, obviously, he's one of the best locks in the world. So you can see he's been rewarded with a lot of good game time there. And I do think he's coming into the World Cup in really good form. Uh, obviously, there's been a few other guys, Rubiolo, has come in in recent times. The main minutes that you're missing are the likes of Lucas Paulos, who um, who got injured towards the end um, of uh, Argentina's fixtures. But mostly the guys, the three guys you're relying on is Petty Lavanini and Alemano. 
with uh, other guys to maybe step in at a pinch, but certainly not the first choice guys. The first choice guys are those three. Now, loose forwards, you're also kind of reliant on a few big names, and there's a few guys who float between positions. Uh, six, and it's a bit annoying with the Argentinian flanks because for the majority of the time, they played left flank, right flank. So they didn't switch open side, blind side, but then under Checker, they do seem to be doing putting uh, Matera on the open side. I'm not sure if that'll change once Crema gets back, but just kind of keep that in mind that you can't, across the cycle, they've changed the way they deploy their flankers, but for what it that's worth. Uh, Matera there, uh, at number six, has around about half of the game time. Now you might think, man, I'm sure Matera has played more than that. Well, yes, he has, because he is also the leading candidate at number eight. Both of those green ones are Pablo Matera. So he has played a lot of starting minutes for Argentina. The former captain, uh, just crucially, crucially important. Um, behind him at number six is Juan Martin Gonzalez in blue. Has also played a lot of game time on the flank for Argentina recently. Uh, he's also been one of the kind of more late emergences in the cycle, I suppose. And he's also maybe been getting a bit more game time with uh, Crema being suspended for that rugby championship campaign. So number six is mainly Matera and Juan Martin Gonzalez. And then number eight is Matera. And then blue is Rodrigo Bruni with uh, Facundo Issa there in yellow. So the number eight stocks are pretty deep. If you put Matera on the flank, you start with Bruni or Issa. That's fine. Issa has often been used as a substitute to add some kind of punch. Uh, and then the other flank, green is Crema when he's not been suspended followed by the likes of Grondona, Juan Montin Gonzalez, uh, and there's other guys who have filled in as well. But yeah, largely Matera, Crema, and then one other guy, whether it's Juan Montin Gonzalez, whether it's Bruni, whether it's Issa, uh, Grondona, somebody like that. The main guys have missed out the likes of Horizon and uh, Lazana. But yeah, the majority of the minutes, you can see there's very few wasted minutes in the locks and the loose forwards. Argentina's main guys are all going to the World Cup. Uh, the backs is maybe a little bit different. I mean, 9 and 10 is pretty stable, though. The majority of the minutes are going to the World Cup. Number 9, Gonzalo Bertrano is your leading guy. Kubeli is second, and Bazan Valez is your third guy. Escura is the main guy who misses out, but Escura hasn't been in the team for a little while. Gonzalo Bertrano is the leading candidate for sure. Kubeli is your veteran, and then Bazan Valez can fill in if needs be. Maybe he would have liked a little bit more game time. Uh, and number 10, Santiago Carreras has taken over the number 10 jersey at the start of the campaign, 2020. It was Nico Sanchez, but then uh, Sanchez has kind of lost that spot to Carreras. And then, um, yeah, the guys who are really missing out are the likes of Albanoz and even more so Miotti. But yeah, very stable, 9-10. The only thing you would say between 9 and 10 is the third choice guy hasn't really had that much game time. Hmm. Uh, midfield, the main guy who you're missing here is Matias Orlando. He's pretty much the gray in both 12 and 13. The majority of the minutes are going to France. 12 is De La Fuente. He's played the majority of the game time, more than half of the game time in the number 12 jersey, followed by Chocobares, uh, Sinti Moroni. All these guys have had game time. Uh, Chocobares may be the kind of preferred candidate. Now, remember his time, although he's there in blue with about 20% would be more if not for his long-term injury last year. And then 13, Moroni, followed by Sinti, Chocobares, and Malia. Um, Sinti seems to be the preferred guy at the moment, with Moroni kind of being that versatile bench replacement who can cover the wing, who can cover 12, who can cover 13. Uh, gives them good options, but um, yeah, uh, as I said, apart from Orlando, the majority of the game time is heading off to the World Cup. And then outside backs, this is the one that looks... A lot more like chopping and changing. And this is the one where we have genuinely one of the leading candidates not make the Rugby World Cup squad. And that's on the right wing. That's Batista Del Rey. He's not made the squad. So his game time on the right wing, he had about a third, uh, is missing. So on the right wing, you're left with Bofelli, Carreras. That's uh, your green and blue. And then uh, so, uh, that's... Uh, Mateo Carreras, I should say. Santiago Carreras also had some game time. Iscaro has had some game time. And um, Moroni's also had some game time. So, yeah, the right wing has had a lot of changes. Also Santiago Cordero as well. So a lot of guys have tried that right wing. Left wing is pretty similar names. Uh, Bofelli is your main guy on the left wing. 
M off Mateo Carreras, Sinti, Moroni, Santiago Carreras. Uh, again, it's mainly uh, Cordero and uh, Mojano that miss out. I remember back in the day, it was Delhi and Mojano, and I love that wing combination, but uh, a lot has changed since then. And then fullback is pretty stable. Malia, half the game time more. Uh, Bofelli, Santiago Carreras, and even this new guy, Bogado. Um, yeah, the majority of the game time is going there, but the wings do seem to be one position that get changed a lot with this Argentinian squad. Now, based on recent form, and it doesn't really show here, I think Mateo Carreras is the leading candidate for one of the wings because he's played on both. And then there's a decision to make. Do you play Buffelli at fullback and pick another winger? Or do you play Buffelli on the wing and then maybe Malia at fullback? That's a decision for Michael Checker to pick from. But yeah, like I said, overall, it doesn't look too bad. There's not many positions where a lot of game time has been wasted. Obviously, if they have an injury at loose head prop, that looks a little bit concerning. If Montoya gets injured, that's a bit concerning. But the majority of these positions have a pretty able backup. I mean, if Santiago Carreras gets injured, Sanchez steps up. But you wouldn't want to have two tens go down like a you know New Zealand from 2011, where you lost the same player, uh, you know, in the same position over and over again. So the main omissions in this Argentinian squad are really the likes of Delhi on the wing, Cordero on the wing, Orlando in the midfield, Medrano in the props. Um, but yeah, the majority of the guys are going, which is, um, I think, a pretty pleasing to see from an Argentinian point of view. Um, Gajo, Montoya, and Cordela, that's your starting front row and your top 15 based on the minutes we've seen at this World Cup, followed by Petty and Lavanini in the second row. Matera, Crema, and Matera in the back row. So you need two Pablo Materas. But realistically, either Matera, Crema, Bruni, or Matera, Crema, Isa, or Matera, Crema, uh, Juan Martin Gonzalez. Take your pick. Probably Juan Martin Gonzalez. Uh, 9 and 10, uh, Bertrano and Carreras. I think that's a pretty much safe bet. Midfield. Based on the minutes, it's De La Fuente and Moroni. But if I had to guess, I would maybe say Chocobares and Sinti, based on recent form. And then wings, you're going to have Bofelli on the left wing, <laughs> Bofelli on the right wing, and Malia at fullback. So you need two uh, Bofellis. As I said, though, realistically, it's uh, Mateo Carreras and then the other two positions to find out where does Bofelli play and do you play Malia or a different winger. But... Um, yeah, that's the Argentinian depth chart. Like I said, pretty stable. If you're wondering where to get the Argentinian jersey, it's the number one jersey people have asked me. Where can I buy an Argentinian rugby jersey? Lovell Rugby has their 2019, not 2019, 2023 rugby jersey on sale. The home one, look, the, the, the home jersey and the alternate jersey. So the, the, the hoops and the um, that kind of stripe one. So yeah, check those out. Lovell Rugby, it's an affiliate of the channel. Finally, we found a shop which has the Argentinian rugby jersey in stock. It ain't cheap, but uh, it doesn't go on sale that often. So if you wanted to grab one, that's the place to get it done. Um, but yeah, pretty stable squad from Michael Checker. We look forward to looking at a few more depth charts before the day is done. Um, but yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again. So see you later.